This lesson isn't anything new. What it is um, is some tricks to help you multiply polynomials, specifically binomials, a little faster. So this technique is not required, but some of you might prefer these tricks because it will shortcut you to the answer a little faster rather than having to use FOIL to expand it all out. So the first trick that we're going to look at is when you have a sum and a difference of the same binomial. So if you notice, I have a plus b, and then here's a minus b. So what happens when you do that out, which many of you may have already recognized by now, is that you get the square of the first term, the square of the second term, the middle piece would cancel because one would be plus, one would be minus, and then you have a negative. So um, it becomes the first term squared minus the second term squared. In an actual numerical example, we would have x plus 3 times x minus 3, and then it would be x squared minus 9 because it would be x squared minus 3 squared. So here's the trick, and you can get it done in very few seconds. So this is x plus 7 times x minus 7, so that's going to be the first term squared minus the second term squared. And you're done. Let's look at letter B. Because I have a plus and a minus, it doesn't matter which one comes first, but I have one binomial being addition, one binomial being subtraction, and they're the exact same thing. It's going to be the first term squared minus the second term squared. And then you're done. You just have to be careful that if there's a coefficient, you square that as well. Don't write 3x squared because it's 9x squared. This next trick is when you're squaring a binomial. So unlike one being plus and one being minus, they're both plus, or it's just a one binomial being squared, um, or minus is being squared. So what that means is that you would have the square of the first term and the square of the second term, just like earlier. But because the two middle terms don't actually cancel, you have a middle term. Um, you would actually, if you think about writing it out with FOIL, you would have two of the same middle terms. So that's why we have two of A times B. So you take the product of the, these two terms and then double it. Here it's going to be plus 2AB, and here it's going to be minus 2AB because the product would be negative. So in an actual example, we would have x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared, and we'd have x squared and we'd have 3 squared, so we'd have x squared and 9, but 3 times x is 3x, and when you double it, you get 6x. So you'd have x squared plus 6x plus 9. This one would be x squared and 9, but when you do the middle term, you'd get negative 3x, double it, and then you get negative 6x. So let's practice that. So I have y squared, and I have 1 squared, um, and then I just have to figure out what the middle term is. Well, the middle term would be negative 1 times y, so that would be negative 1y. Double that is negative 2y. So I'd have negative, uh, actually I should rewrite it and say y squared minus 2y plus 1. The reason that it's not minus 1 is because a negative squared is a positive. So it will always be positive at the end. Let's check out one more. Um, so I would have the first term squared, which would be 4x squared. Then I'd have the negative 3 squared, which would be plus 9. And then the middle piece is going to be negative 6x doubled. So that's going to be minus 12x. Let's check out this real-life example that relates to genetics, um, which I think you learn about in science. Each of the two dogs has one black gene and one white gene. The diagram shows the possible gene combinations of an offspring and the resulting colors. So one way that you can determine possible genetic combinations for um, children or offspring is by using this thing called a Punnett square. Um, and that's what this little description is all about. It's a way that you can organize the different hair combinations or eye combinations um, that your children can have. 
Um, so letter A, what percent of possible gene combinations result in black? So there are four possibilities. How many are black? Hello, 25%. You just have to look at the chart and pick the one that's black. The genetic makeup of an offspring can be modeled by this polynomial. Use the square of a binomial pattern to model the possible combinations of an offspring. So I'm going to use the technique uh, of squaring a binomial that we just practiced. So here's the binomial. And it's going to be the first term squared, the second term squared, and then the um, piece in the middle is going to be double the product. So the first term squared, well, 0.5b squared is 0.25b squared. 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. Um, same thing over here at the end. 0.5w squared is 0.25w squared. So now we have to figure out what the middle piece is going to be. So it's going to be 0.5w times 0.5b doubled. Well, that's going to be 0.25, oh wait, whoops, it's doubled. So it's 0 0.25, I'll write it down here, BW times 2. So up top, that's actually 0.5BW. So there's my equation that could represent the different possibilities of genetics for my children. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.